everyone. My name is Lauren, and I'm one of the co-presidents of Roman University's 3D Printing Club. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a personalized bridge desk organizer in Onshape. Depending on the size of your desk organizer, you can have it hold pencils, you can make it a bit smaller and have it hold some paper clips and thumbtacks. That's completely up to you. Okay, let's get started. All right, so the first thing to do, of course, is to go to onshape.com and sign in. If this is your first time using Onshape, you can sign up using education credentials. So if you're a Rowan University student, you can just use your Rowan email address and you should have no problem. So I'm going to sign in and it should remember my information and bring me right to my homepage. Yes, awesome. All right, so this is what you should see when you come to Onshape. These are all of my past models here. But the first step to creating our bridge is not here. It's actually over here because I want to show you what it looks like. This is our model. Um, and by the end of it, yours should be exactly like this. Like I said, you can make it a little bit longer if you want to, to hold some pencils. Otherwise, I have, I will also show you here, I have it printed out. So it will look something like this. Okay. So I'm going to come back to this other Onshape window here. Um, and I did mention that the first step is not in Onshape. Um, you do have to go to Google and search bridge clip art. And this is because we are going to pick an image to trace. So once you see all the images here, you can choose one that is head on. So all the bridges in this image are head on. Um, they, they would be a little bit complicated though. So that's why I went with something like this. So when you find the image that you like, you can just save it somewhere to your computer, name it something that you'll remember. Yes, and then you can close out of that window because we no longer need our Google search for bridge clip art. Okay, so you are back here at your Onshape homepage. And the first thing we want to do is upload our bridge picture into our Onshape history. So to do that, we're going to come to this create button, hit that drop down arrow and import files and just find your bridge image wherever you saved it on your computer. And voila, there it is, just pops up right there. Okay, once you have your bridge picture inside of Onshape, you're going to start a new document. So to do that, we're gonna to come to the same create button, select document, and it's going to ask you to name it. You can choose whatever name you like. I'm just going to do bridge model. There we go, okay. All right, here we go, it's loading. Cool, so this is what you'll see when you open any document, any new document in Onshape. This is the 3D view. I like to do my models in the 2D view. So I will space myself out in the front plane here. And to begin, you're going to hit the sketch button at the top left of your toolbar and select the front plane again so it knows where you want to do your sketch. All right, so. We found that picture online. Now we have to get it in front of us so we can sketch it. So to do that, you come over to this DXF paper looking icon here and hit that down arrow and you're going to insert an image. You go to other documents, my on shape and boom, it's the first one there. Notice that your cursor is now a plus. That means that you are ready to click and drag out your image. So go ahead and do just that. And it doesn't matter how big you make it because we can change the dimensions. Once you drag it out, if you want to move it to a different area of your plane, you can just click and drag your mouse to wherever you would like. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to make my bridge a little bit bigger because I wanted to hold some pencils. So I'm going to come to the right of my toolbar to this dimension tool. I'm going to click on that and come to the bottom of my model. And instead of 4.71, I'm going to change that to seven, seven inches long. I think the average length of a pen is around six inches. So seven inches should be fine. It's a little bit of wiggle room. <laughs> okay, all right, cool. So hit escape to get out of that dimension tool and you're ready to do your tracing. A really cool trick when it comes to tracing is being able to use the mirror tool. So in that case, we only need to mirror to sketch half of our model because we can mirror the same model with the same symmetry to the other side. So I'm going to first create my line of symmetry here. And if you just put your cursor over that dot in the middle and just drag your mouse up, notice that you have a blue and yellow line. That means that your line is completely straight. 
So once you do that, you can just drag down. Again, make sure you have that blue and yellow line. And yep, yeah, now your line is there and you're ready to get started. So I'm going to start by tracing these curvy lines here. And to do that, I'm going to use my three point arc. So click on that. You want to first click on the first point of the arc and then click on the second point. And then you can just bring your mouse in until you're happy with the placement of your line and just click and it's permanent now. I'm going to stay in this tool because I want to do the same thing on this side. So I'm gonna come here, click, click again, and then I have to click to secure it. And boom, all done. All right, now we can hit escape. And now what I'm going to do is connect my two lines up here using the line tool. And it's okay if it's not perfectly straight. If you are a perfectionist and you would like to make that line straight in the middle, you can change the order in which you do these lines. You can do this one first, then do a straight line across and then connect this line here from this point to that point. It's totally up to you. Okay. Now I'm going to do offsetting to get another line beneath this one. So to do that, the offset tool is right next to your scissor tool here. So just click on that and you can click on the lines that you want to offset here. All right, cool. So now you just take this arrow and you can bring it in to match the line of your bridge there. And that looks about good. So I'm just gonna hit enter and it's going to solidify there. Very cool. All right, now we're done with offset, so you can hit the escape button. Um, I want to connect my lines here, so I'm going just to use my line tool, just like that, and then up, and now my lines are connected. Okay, so again, you can do this, this sketch in any order that you want. Um, just make sure that you are going over all the lines and that everything's connected. Um, the only thing that you can do differently from what your bridge looks like is get rid of these, these legs here. Instead of that, we're just going to create a box from here to our line of symmetry, just like that. This is just to minimize the amount of support material that it's going to take to print our bridge. Um, and also, it can give you more depth for whatever you want to store in your bridge desk organizer, too. Okay. So I'm just gonna go and continue to model these lines here. And then once you get to that point, um, you are ready to mirror. And feel free to use the offset tool for these as well. Yes, and also don't forget to close your lines here. You just wanna make sure that they are all connected. And if you are really nitpicky like I am, you can just cut off this extra line that you don't need. And I think this is all connected. You can always just put a line in case, just to make sure. All right, cool. So I did the first line of every bar. Now I'm gonna going to come in with the offset tool and I'm just going to drag out and make sure that I have a double line there. And notice that, okay, this is also something to, okay, never mind. I'm sorry. We will get to the dimension of these two lines in a second. One thing to take a look at when you are doing this step, um, you want to make sure that your lines are all connected. So notice that I have um, a point where I'm not connected here. So to change that, I'm just going to bring a line right here. Sometimes it's a little bit finicky. So in this case, when it doesn't want to connect, what you can do is drag a line up and through your other line and then cut off the excess line there. And it's still being weird, okay. I wonder why it's doing that. 
I'm really not sure. In this case, you can just do a line and leave the little bit of excess there, and you should still have the same effect. Um, you can do this for all of your lines. When they're not connecting, uh, you can have problems when you go to extrude your model. So just make sure that everything is connected. You can do that by zooming in. Yep. Okay, so I mentioned that we want to dimension our lines. So to do that, we're going to come to the dimension tool. Make sure you select one and then the next line, and it's going to tell you how many inches are in between. So if we're happy with 0 0.06 inches, you can just hit enter. And the reason why I'm doing this is that you can dimension all of your lines to have the same width. So again, I'm going to come to offset. I'm going to hit this button here, drag out, hit enter. Make sure I have good connections. Same problem. I wonder why. There might be something weird going on with the three point arc. That's okay. Yeah, see that? And this one too. For anyone who's an expert in on shape, uh, let us know why this is happening. I'm not sure. These are all okay though. Yeah, definitely something with that three point arc. Okay, this to 0.06. I think that there, there's a dimension option um, when you do the offset, so we can continue to do that instead. This one is not going to be 0 0.06. That one is just going to follow whatever your bridge drawing is. Yep, we're connected on that side. We're connected on this side. Awesome. And down here. Okay, yes, I'm sure you see that this takes a lot of time and that's why mirroring is such an important thing to use in this situation. All right, we are almost at the end. All right, last one. Oh, look, that was perfectly connected. That's great. Or a little bit over. Okay, so we have all of our lines here with a width of 0 0.06 inches between them. We've made sure that all of our lines are closed. So now we are good to extrude. Sometimes I can get a little bit picky, which you've seen previously in this video, and I like to cut off the excess. But I think with these ones, there might be issues if we cut them off. So we can just leave those. If you want to cut the excess in this area, you can feel free to do so. All right, let's try to do our mirroring. So here is your mirror tool. It's first going to ask you to select a mirror line, which is why we have our line of symmetry here. So just click over that. Now it's going to ask, select the entities to be mirrored. In this case, we are just going to drag our cursor just like that. And it's thinking, and look at that. Okay, it did most of them. Let's see, it missed this one, so we're going to add that one. Anything else? I think it missed bottom line there. I'm going to try this one more time here. Okay, that looks really good. All right, everything's connected. Perfect. Let's just make sure that our points in the middle are connected. Sometimes that can be tough. Looks like they are. All right. Yeah, I think we should be all good. Okay, so the real test of making sure that everything is connected and all good is to extrude. So we're going to hit our green check mark here. We have our model. I'm going to recenter myself. 
And now we are going to come over here to this extrude button, which is right next to our sketch. All right, let's see. It's gonna ask us to select the individual parts and that's just because we had those extra lines that we left. Okay, I'm gonna go back. Make sure that when you're selecting, you're selecting inside of the square or the rectangle, I'm sorry. Okay, it looks like everything, oh, there we go. It looks like everything is selected. Now we're going to change the extrusion depth from one inch to three millimeters, and it should come up when we click out of this as, yep, 0.118 inches. Now hit that green check mark and cross your fingers. All right, awesome. So everything that we did worked and we now have this beautiful bridge. Well, half of the bridge that's going to create our box. So go ahead and center yourself out there. So once we do all of this, the next thing that we want to do is have a parallel bridge model, which is exactly identical. So to do that, the first step is to create a new plane. So come over here to this plane button. Um, and just before you do that, I want to mention that when you are in sketch mode, the tools up here change. When you are not in sketch mode, you will see this. If I go back into sketch mode, all of your tools are now different. So you want to make sure that you hit the green check mark and you extrude so that all of your tools are now these ones. Okay, so plane, you're just going to select plane and it's going to ask you entities of the plane. We're just going to select the surface of our extrude one. All right, once you do that, very easy. Um, hit your, you know what, let's change this to, I guess this is up to you guys. However wide you want to make your your model, you can do so. This is going to be the amount of space going this way that you have within your desk organizer. I'm going to do two inches. And that's, again, up to you. So hit your green check mark. And now you don't say anything here, but if we go into our 3D view, notice that we have this other plane here, which is two inches away from our other model. So now what we want to do is we want to replicate this on our plane one here. So to do that, you're gonna come again to this mirror tool and you're going to select the mirror entities to be mirrored, which is the surface of our bridge. And the mirror plane is plane one. Boom, look at that, that's awesome. Okay, so hit that green check mark. Now, because we have two inches between here and the plane, our box is going to be four inches wide. So if you're okay with that, then keep going. If you want to change it back to a two inch depth, then this would be one. Any way that you want to do it. I'm going to put mine back to two so that I can have a nice and big organizer for my desk. Oops. There we go. Okay, perfect. Now we are ready to continue. So the next part is to do another sketch. And in this sketch, we are going to be making the internal a box that we are then going to extrude to connect our two pieces of the bridge here. So just go to the front plane and look at one of your, your bridges head on. Select a new sketch. You're going to do it on top of this extrusion. And now what you're going to do is you're going to offset each of these lines here. Oops, okay, I'm gonna go back because there is an option to offset them all together, which will let you move them all together with this arrow. So that's what I wanna do. Okay, hit enter and then do 0.2. Now this is going to be the inside of your little box here. Um, make sure that you connect the edges. Oops, okay, let's do that again. We might need to do another line all around. I don't think so, but let's just see if this works. Okay, once you have this sketch right here, you can hit your green check mark because we are done in sketch two. And now what we're going to do is extrude this. So you wanna kind of come out of your 2D view just a bit, hit that extrude button and select the area that you want to extrude. Notice that it's going in the other direction. That's why we have this handy dandy arrow right here. So I'm going to move mine across. This is four inches. so. 
408, 4.1. Okay, there we go. 4.2, just so that we have a little bit of overlap there. Yep. Perfect. Hit that green check mark and notice that we have a really great little tray in the middle of our two bridges. There's the back view. You can move it around all you want. Okay, so at this point, your model is done. The only part that we have left is personalization. So if this is something that you're choosing to do, you would again, create another sketch. You're going to select the front plane on top of your extrusion. And you're gonna come up here to this text option in our sketch toolbar. And you can put a text box wherever you want on your bridge. And then you can put your name or whatever you want your bridge to say. Green check mark there. There's my name, awesome. You can use the dimension tool to change the size of your name once you put it on um, inside of your sketch here. I'm happy with mine, so I'm going to leave it. I'm going to hit the green check mark because I'm happy with where it is and I'm going to extrude it. Now this extrusion is going to be very small because we want to minimize the amount of support material that we're going to need to create this model. So I'm going to do 0 0.01 inches. Hit the green check mark. And then if you go a little bit to the side here, notice that, yeah, there's letters, but they're really thin. So this is good. This means, like I said, we're not gonna have a lot of support material for our model here. All right, congratulations. You have made your desk organizer as a personalized bridge model. If you are ready to export, you come down to part studio one, right click. And the last option here is export. You click on that. It's going to ask you to name it. For the 3D Printing Club, if you are submitting this to us to print, it must be last name underscore bridge. So once you name it that, make sure that it is in STL format, which should be the last option here, and inches. After that, just hit the OK button and it will download for you. I'm not going to hit that because I don't need to download it, but if you are doing so, make sure you hit the OK. And once you have your STL, you can upload that to the form that 3PC provides to order your prints. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial video. Make sure to check out our other videos to see more really cool models. All right, thanks guys.